In less than 50 years, the Middle East has been rapidly transformed by its oil revenues, from an inhospitable desert region into a major economic player. The United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia are now home to some of the world's wealthiest people. In this program, some of the Middle East's richest offer us an exclusive glimpse into their extraordinary lives. We'll find out how they make and spend their wealth, what drives them and exactly what they drive. We meet four very different men with a shared desire for success. Sheikh Maktoum has a passion for speed and the drive to succeed. It's a venture that not only changes the world of motorsport, but changes the world of sport. Sheikh Hamad has a different coloured car for every day of the week. This one is Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And that one is the Friday. Sheikh Al Jabba is a hotel magnate with a fierce ambition. I start my life to build and to make the money. And Mohammed bin Salayam is a rally champion with a famous friend and a $10 million car collection. Believe me, I'm not super rich, but I enjoy it. I spend the money that I have. Dubai, one of the fastest developing and wealthiest places on Earth. Determined not to be dependent on its oil reserves, this emirate has set out to reinvent itself as a major player in tourism and the business world. The result, an economy that has grown by a third since the year 2000. Amongst Dubai's most well-known landmarks is the world's tallest hotel, the Burj Al Arab, often called the Sale. And this, the spectacular Palm. This $5 billion land reclamation scheme features luxury homes and hotels and is being constructed just off the coast. Key figures in the current economic explosion in Dubai are the Maktoums, the ruling family. One of the younger members of this dynasty and the nephew of the Crown Prince is Sheikh Maktoum Hasha Maktoum Al Maktoum. He's currently making a big noise in the world of motorsport. The A1 Grand Prix series is his idea and is being brought to life with the help of his family's wealth, an estimated $13 billion. At the age of just 28, the Sheikh decided to turn his love of motorsport into a business. His vision for the A1 Grand Prix, known as the World Cup of Motorsport, is to rival Formula One. The A1 series features 25 drivers from 25 nations, each racing identical cars. It is a race between countries rather than individual drivers. It's a venture that not only changes the world of motorsport, but changes the world of sport. The Sheikh, a former triathlete, got his inspiration for A1 while taking part in an international multi-sport challenge. The idea for A1 Grand Prix started when I did the Land Rover G4 challenge. There were 23 Land Rovers parked, each one had a flag on it. And I said, you know what, this is fantastic. It could be very popular. And every idea starts from saying, you know what, I could do it better. The new A1 series has cost millions to set up, and Sheikh Maktoum has dug deep into his own pockets to make it happen. To finance the whole project, I mean, you wouldn't be far off, you say, three, four hundred million dollars easily. Sheikh Maktoum wants A1 to really make its mark in the world of motorsport. But when it comes to raising more money, he found that the Maktoum name could be a mixed blessing. Well, in business, uh, the name surely helps in opening doors, but a hindrance is there's something called the, the Maktoum inflation, or what my partners call the Maktoum inflation. If something's worth 50, it's suddenly worth 100. Um, 
but people soon learn that hey there's a business and people do not become rich by being stupid about money despite his youth Sheikh Maktoum is an experienced businessman after working for his father in finance he became CEO of a family company selling everything from DVDs and denim to oil I managed to make him a lot of money in a very short span uh, which was a great foundation for me um, then from there I mean basically mortgaged everything I have to establish a one Setting up the A1 series is a huge risk, and its demands mean the shape works 24-7 to get it right. A typical day is waking up with your phone not stopping. You have to wake up at all different times of the night and day to work in different time zones. You, you sleep three, four hours a day, and you don't stop. He might work hard, but he plays hard too. He's been racing cars for years. Of course I love to drive, but it's a hobby. This is a Caterham R500. It's uh, faster than any Ferrari. This is the GT40 Ford, which is uh, my first super sports car I ever bought. <laughs> experience in a car like this is unimaginable except in a GT car or an F1 or an E1 car. One of the most expensive areas of Dubai, construction has been underway for two years on what will be Sheikh Maktoum's new home. Just the place to garage a few of those cars. It's in the most exclusive area and the highest value per square foot cost of living, I think, on the planet. Very big grounds and uh, it's not cheap to build. Coming up, Sheikh Maktoum and his motorsport dream are under pressure as he brings the A1 Grand Prix to Dubai for the first time. We meet the Sheikh with a passion for invention and the rally champion who has gained a very famous fan. Sheikh Hamad bin Hamdan Al Nayan is one of the wealthiest men in the United Arab Emirates. He's also one of the most unusual, known to some as the Rainbow Sheikh because he has a different coloured car for every day of the week. He's a member of the oil rich Al Nayan family, who have ruled Abu Dhabi for over 300 years. Sheikh Hamad's cousin is the president. This makes him super rich. His family are estimated to be worth more than $20 billion. With time on his hands, no need to work, and a limitless amount of money, Sheikh Hamad has become one of the world's biggest spenders. We never put money in the bank. What we get, we spend it. We get, we spend it. But he likes to spend it in enterprising ways. He's best known for his eccentric constructions like this, a replica of Noah's Ark that he built for his children to have birthday parties in. Sheikh Hamad's main home is this palace in Abu Dhabi, which he designed himself. Many people come to me and they said, Hamad, why you make castle? Because of our history, you know. I am from this family who ruled this country since uh, more than 300 years. So here the lounge. Inside, he has installed some special touches for his guests and family in the lavish communal lounges. 
This is uh, where we sit normally and we meet our people. This is from British Airways. Uh, we have the mirror, we have the TV, telephone, and this is a speaker and, and the wash basin. Sheikh Hamad spent 30 years serving in his country's armed forces. But since retiring seven years ago, he has led a life of luxury. I have in my work who only served me is more than 200 people. And sometimes I feel shame. I think I'm lazy. I don't work. I don't go to the office. Most of the things they tell me by telephone or maybe they bring some paper to sign. The Sheikh also has another home in the desert, where he enjoys one of his favorite hobbies, cruising the sand dunes in his new four-wheel drive, when he can find the keys. Okay, we'll go now. This is a Hummer, an American military-designed vehicle, but it's not just any Hummer. This Hummer is, they call it Alpha, and it's limited edition. They built only 300 of them. And there are only two coming out of America. It's the best. It's the top of the pyramid, you know, of the off-road car. This ultimate off-roader doesn't come cheap. This is, I think, Maybe 150, I think. I don't remember exactly, but almost 150. Thousand dollars. Now we will go to the hole here. The big hole, we call it Oldsmobile. It's a big hole. Don't worry, huh? Jake Hamad finds that even top-of-the-range cars can sometimes come a little unstuck. I think we're stuck, really, because I must be quick going up, not stop in the middle. Hammer, it's uh, because of the long wheelbase. This is one of the problems, but it's the best, but it's my mistake. Sheikh Hamad's love of the desert has led him to convert all sorts of vehicles for use on the sands. But with his latest creation, his imagination has truly run riot. Fast-growing Dubai is keen to attract international sporting events, but it already has one very famous race. The Emirates is home to the $6 million Dubai World Cup world's richest horse race. Sheikh Mohammed, head of the Maktoum family and the ruler of Dubai, is one of horse racing's most influential figures. He has a stable of 400 horses and recently spent $42 million on 27 horses at the Keeneland sales in Kentucky, USA. For one yearling, he paid $6.8 million. Ahmed bin Salayam is another native of Dubai. This man of action is the Middle East number one rally driver and a friend of Michael Jackson. He lives in unparalleled luxury and has a collection of supercars valued at over $10 million. <laughs> Mohammed is a man whose singular passion for cars has shaped his life. When I uh, started it, it's just the only thing that really made my hair, you know, just stand up was, was the speed, the thrill of the speed. Speed is, is what I uh, love. Since the 1980s, Mohammed has dominated the world of desert rallying. 
He's won over 60 rallies worldwide and won the Middle East's most prestigious event, the FIA Rally Championships, 14 times in 17 years. I've never said it uh, publicly. I, maybe I was the highest paid Arab sportman. Four million dollars I used to get a year. It felt much better that I'm doing something dangerous and I'm doing my hobby, but I'm getting something in return, at least to feel good about it. Now, at the age of 43, this father of five has retired from racing, but his love of speed remains. He organizes a yearly international rally, the UAE Desert Challenge. It's a grueling five-day, 2,000-kilometer race through the rugged and sandy terrains of Abu Dhabi and Dubai. The race has been staged for the last 15 years. It is seen as the warm-up for the famous Paris-Dakar rally and attracts many of the world's top desert rally drivers. The race is open to amateurs too. All you need is $150,000 and a highly modified car or bike. It is, I would say, my baby. And uh, it's grown up from a small event to a huge event where we can see a thousand people coming, and I'm proud of it. Mohammed's success has brought in many admirers from the world of entertainment, including Michael Jackson. Yes, I am uh, proud to, to have his friendship. He's a very humble guy. Jackson attended the 2005 UAE Desert Challenge Award Ceremony as a personal favor to Mohammed. He never said no. I would meet somebody with 10% of his fame and they would say the first thing, no, or the second thing, how much if you want me to come there, you know? This guy did not say anything. He said, okay, it's a sport, Mohammed, I trust you. Mohammed's wealthy family are behind some of the biggest construction projects in Dubai. Perhaps the most exclusive and imaginative is located four kilometers offshore. This is the world, a creation of 300 man-made islands, strategically placed to create a map of the world. Each island costs between 10 and 40 million dollars. Rod Stewart is rumored to have paid 25 million dollars for England. And Mohammed has a potential buyer in mind for another island. Yes, I've been trying to convince Michael Jackson to buy um, a property here, and I will keep on doing it. But for Mohammed, it's motors, not money, that fuels his passion. Despite retiring in 2003, he still wants to go faster than anyone else. Driving is where I take everything outside, and it's just a feeling I cannot express. I took a car and went to the desert two months ago, and that was faster than the record time, and so it is good. It was a good feeling. Does this mean I will go back running? I would love to. I am bored. It's already home to the world and the tallest hotel in the world, but now construction is underway on another record-breaking building in Dubai. In 2009, the Burj Tower will reach 700 meters. It will be more than 200 meters taller than the world's current tallest building, the Taipei Tower in Taiwan, and twice the height of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. This 164-story luxury monolith will cost nearly a billion dollars. Sheikh Maktoum is the founder of the new A1 series, the World Cup of Motorsport. This multi-million dollar enterprise is in its first season. The sixth race in the series is an especially important one for the Sheikh. It takes place in his home state of Dubai and he knows he has to deliver. Internationally, and to our franchises and fans globally, they expect such high expectations out of Dubai, which puts on a lot of pressure on me. Simultaneously, I'm trying to showcase A1 to the people of Dubai. So it's a tall order, especially with a country with no motorsport heritage. 
Sheikh Maktoum prepares to play host to the motor racing elite at a reception held at one of the Maktoum family palaces. It's a chance for the big names in A1 to get together before the race. As host, he wants the reception to go off without a hitch. Hey, you guys catching me on this, that's not fair. That works. <laughs> no, you see, without this, it's like wearing jeans and a t-shirt. You put this on, you're wearing a suit. Sheikh Maktoum has managed to involve some of motor racing's top names, and it's clear that they welcome his involvement. Uh, he's very funny, I like him. He, he, he likes to race himself, which he does. And therefore it's logic that he starts his series and he tried the car himself. He looks at every detail on the circuit and is there day and night, so he's really fully involved. People ask me why do you get involved in every single part of the detail. Well, number one, it started as, as my baby. It's, it's, it's a project that's near and dear to my heart. It's my first full venture that I undertook on my own. It's the day of the race. Sheikh Maktoum is first at the track preparing for his big day. He oversees everything. I have a saying which is delegation is the art of second best because no one can do it better than the person who founded it and created it and knows what he wants out of it. The magic's in the detail. You don't stop in a venture like this. Sheikh Maktou is here 100%. He is the first guy on the track and the last guy who goes out on the track. You can see him sometimes at 9, 10 o'clock in the evening. He's still here. He's an extraordinary person to be able to come up with this concept. I mean, we all think of concepts, uh, but to bring it to a reality and have it uh, exceed your expectations, I think is a fantastic effort. Sheikh Maktou has this dream and now it's real. It's happened. We are here. But the Sheikh can't relax, even though everything seems in place. Drivers are here, the teams are here, uh, the promotion's ongoing, the fans are here. So it's looking great and we're giving the fans a good show. It's the fans that count. The size of the TV audience is crucial to the success of the project. Sheikh Maktoum believes his idea of having 25 different nations represented in the race will attract new audiences to the sport. Why isn't motorsport as popular as football? Number one, access accessibility. It's always been a European thing, a Western thing, a North American thing. But the rest of the world, that big gap in the middle, never had the opportunity to even partake. So creating that platform for them, suddenly there's a reason to go racing. To start up a new championship is a big business gamble. So far, the viewing figures for the races in the first season are about 10 million. But they need to get a lot bigger to rival Formula One. The ambitious Sheikh is looking forward to that challenge. I'm developing my philosophies in business. Number one, be honest, be truthful, be straight, be direct, be clear. and. You could afford to lose a battle, but never lose a war. And you don't stop till you die. Coming up, Sheikh Hamad takes to the water in an unusual craft. And Mohammed bin Salayam wants to go faster. I bought it a few months ago and it was not fast enough for me. Sheikh Hamad belongs to one of the ruling families in the United Arab Emirates. His oil-rich family are worth over 20 billion dollars, which means he has little need to work. But with a creative brain and financial resources, what's kept Sheikh Hamad motivated is his fascination with making things. 
he's constructed an entire marina where, over the past 15 years, he has built a variety of creations. They range from a floating three-bedroom house to this, Noah's Ark. Nobody knows how it looks like Noah's Ark, but uh, we try our best to make it uh, look like the shape of Noah's Ark, what the people think about it. It's only one-fifth of real Noah's Ark, and it's like a floating house. In the future, we're going to divide it inside and make it maybe a room. One of Sheikh Hamad's most innovative plans was his idea of turning cars into boats. Here we have the airboat, but I try to put a car in it so we have a cabin for reduce the noise. He got carried away with amphibious vehicles. Every uh, person have dreams and he likes to do something, but he needs two things. He needs time and money. They have the time and they have the money. Sheikh Hamad's pride and joy is this car boat, which operates just like a car but is driven on the water. When he's not working on new ideas, he escapes to his own island. A short 15-minute hop by car boat, of course. This is an island uh, which is uh, almost 50 square kilometer, and it's an uh, island from my grandfather. And uh, we have natural life here. We have the mangrove tree. We have all kind of uh, seabirds, and we have the gazelle. And in the middle of his island hideaway, he's built himself a replica of an historic Arab fort. But Sheikh Hamad is happiest in the desert back on the mainland. He loves it so much he spends months at a time there. He's created his own luxury motorhome for his desert excursions. This is the globe a mammoth 50-ton multi-wheeled motorhome unlike any other. It is uh, simple and it's cheaper and also at the same time it is big. You know, we have big family. Uh, it's enough for us. We have nine bedrooms in it, each one with a bathroom, and we have the sitting room. And it's four-story with a 24-ton of water. The globe is built from fiberglass and plywood. The tyres, costing $17,000 each, are from the local oil field platforms. It's uh, a big motorhome. This is the question. We have three bedrooms on this floor. The globe might be huge, but Sheikh Hamad says it's practical and cost-effective. And it's not expensive, comparing maybe cheaper than normal motorhome, you know? If you buy a motorhome in the United States, you pay sometimes $500,000. This one, less than $100,000. The tyres have to be big to handle the tricky sands of the desert, but his home still needs this 20-ton truck to pull it. When he's found a spot he likes, Sheikh Hamad will stay more than a month with his extended family, gathered around him in the globe. The Sheikh's creative projects have cost him millions. His most recent construction is this huge pyramid, for which he has elaborate plans. Sheikh Hamad's eccentric boats are inexpensive in comparison to many of the mega yachts of today. Among these is Octopus, a $200 million aqua palace belonging to Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen. It has a crew of 60 and 7 decks, and the two helicopter landing pads come in handy when you throw a party for the likes of Leonardo DiCaprio and Cameron Diaz. Or for $100,000 a day, you could charter the 400-foot Alexander. Belonging to the late Greek shipping tycoon John Latsis, it can sleep 60. Guests have included Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall. Mohammed bin Salem is the Middle East's number one rally driver. In 2003, at the age of 41, 
he retired from the sport after a glittering 22-year career. He was the highest paid Arab sportsman in the 1990s, earning over $4 million a year. I mean, people think I'm super rich. Believe me, I'm not super rich. But I spend, I, I enjoy it. I spend the money that I have. Mohammed spent most of his millions on a limited edition car collection, which is the envy of speed enthusiasts the world over. Now, this is a monster. This really, I admire it out of all the cars because it really makes me sweat when I drive it. These super cool cars are worth over $10 million. Mohammed's collection boasts some of the world's fastest and most expensive. This Ferrari F40 is valued at $200,000. I think Ferrari just made a point of that they don't have to try very hard to sell their cars. I mean, if you look at it, there's nothing in it except an air conditioning. Then there's the Porsche Carrera GT, costing $400,000. Carbon fiber chassis, carbon fiber body, lovely car. It's just a little bit hard on the traffic because of the clutch. Next, the Ferrari Enzo, one of only 500 made. Cost a million dollars. It's the latest of Ferrari, a beautiful car, definitely tested by Michael Schumacher himself. Easy to drive, very fast. But the masterpiece of his collection is this limited edition Mercedes CLK GTR. How did they fit two seats in it? I mean, uh, it's, it's really an amazing achievement. But of course, you have to be so small. And you know, it doesn't fit for the fat people at all. It's very fast, unique. You can see the money. I mean, OK, it costs about $1.8 million. His latest acquisition is this Porsche GT1, costing $900,000. They made 19 out of these cars. I like the car very much. I drove it once in an open area and it's so fast. I reached nearly 381 kilometers in it. Mohammed's passion for speed goes beyond just buying supercars. Since retiring, he spends much of his time in his garage with his engineer, transforming his less powerful cars into supercar hybrids. This is an SLK 55 from AMG and uh, I bought it uh, a few months ago and it was not fast enough for me. So I had an idea. You get the most powerful engine from an SLR McLaren and this is you know, like over 600 horsepower. So I said I'll fit it in the small car and then I will get a faster car than the SLR McLaren but for a fraction of the price. I think there is nothing left in my collection except maybe the mother's car, and I don't think I'm allowed to do that. It's just that I cannot leave cars alone. You know, I think they are boring if you leave, leave them alone. Mohammed has been retired now for two years, but it looks as though the lure of racing in the desert may be too strong for him to resist, even at the age of 43. Well, I saw one of the world champions in, in the cross country. He's 55, you know, so I think I have a few years more to go. So I would love to go back. I see myself going back. Yes, I cannot really stay, I cannot take it anymore. In Dubai last year, there were 5 million visitors. But the Emirates expects to cater for up to 15 million by 2010. The fast-expanding national airline Emirates, controlled by the Maktoum family, has been on an extensive spending spree to get ready. It recently ordered 42 wide-bodied 777 planes, worth $9.7 billion from Boeing. Also in place is a record $12 billion order for 45 of the mammoth Airbus 380s. These are due in service in 2007. Featuring shops, bars and lounges, the Airbus can seat up to 850 passengers. Mm -hmm. 
Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Jaba is the 19th richest Arab in the world. Over the past 27 years, he has created a hugely successful luxury property empire in both the Middle East and Europe. Age 48, he's worth an estimated $3 billion. And he's a totally self-made man. It don't start with money looking to invest my money. Uh, maybe I don't have that luxuries where I start with a lot of money. I start my life to build and to make the money. The cornerstone of Sheikh Al Jabba's property empire is his JJW hotel and resort business, which owns 55 top hotels in Europe, the Middle East and North Africa. Be a self-made man. I had worked very hard since an early age. I've been on the business now 27 years. I never rest a day. Sheikh Al Jabba's empire began in the 1980s when he designed and built the first luxury gated community in Saudi Arabia, featuring all the amenities of a five star hotel. He now owns five compounds, each of which is home to upwards of 400 families. Sheikh Al Jabba's success saw him move into the European luxury property market. He owns a five-star golf resort in Portugal. But the flagship of his hotel empire is the prestigious five-star Hotel Grand Veen in Vienna, which he bought in 2002 for $107 million. It was not a lot for that hotel at all. It might be viewed that way. Uh, but the hotel today is the most successful hotel in Vienna. He divides his time between his homes in Paris, London and Jeddah in his native Saudi Arabia, where he recently designed and constructed this $35 million mansion. You know, we have the, this house has a mix between Italian and French. This is the dining room, where the numbers of visitors is large. And The second floor is the family uh, bedrooms. This is my bedroom here. His lavish home is a far cry from his own modest beginnings. My family was very normal, you know, there are, there are no such wealth I, I had inherited from them at all. For Sheikh Al Jabba, his family, and in particular his three children, are as important as his business. I get two daughters, the oldest is 20, the second one is 16, and my son now is 14. He is keen that his company will stay in his family. You know, at least my oldest daughter, she will be uh, taking part of the business three years from now. And Sheikh Al Jabba's house in Jeddah is designed very much as a family home. He has built a games room complete with pool table and table football and added a private cinema. Sheikh Al Jabba likes expanding his hotel portfolio. He recently invested $102 million buying two hotels off the Champs Elysees in Paris. He is currently renovating one of them and is involved in every detail. The tables has to be bigger, another chair there, bigger chair here, and here is the... Here this is a uh, terrace with private dining. With, you with can... a private dining. We requested to have the, the TV set framed. Yes, but this is, looks bigger than, in, than, than it should be. This wall has to be removed. Good idea, yeah. Uh, and then you have the dressing room in corners. Easter is a deadline. Uh, every day, you know, you are losing money but not opening that. Absolutely, yeah.
Paris is also being renovated to suit the family's needs. This is the best view, I think, for the apartment. Seeing the evil tower, the cathedral, it makes you work without feeling tired. It makes you never feel tired of Paris. Sheikh Al Jabba plans to expand his business into North America and Eastern Europe. And he still finds his business as exciting as when he first started out. I never uh, feel a day that I was tired of what I do. Maybe if I, felt, if I feel tired of what I do, I will gonna think to change my way of life, but not yet. Coming up, Sheikh Hamad unveils his latest project. Sheikh Hamad is a member of one of Abu Dhabi's richest families. As a royal, he has a staff of 200 at his beck and call. Having served 30 years in the military, this former royal guard now enjoys the finer things in life. Like spending six months of the year in his idyllic desert palace. But he's always thinking of inventive ways to spend his money. His latest venture is this. Possibly the world's most expensive garage. Here, one of my first projects in the 80s. I, I put uh, this uh, Mercedes over uh, a truck chassis. Sheikh Hamad has over 200 vehicles. An eclectic mix of classic cars, Jeeps, trucks, Hummers, sports cars, and some that defy description. Many are his customized creations. He likes these historic Dodge trucks, so he builds them in different sizes. This one is four times bigger than this one in scale, but 64 times bigger in volume. Inside, it's actually another motorhome for his desert trips. The master bedroom on the second story looks out through the windscreen. There's even a kitchen and guest bedrooms. Here we are in the balcony, big balcony. We kind of land a helicopter here. The most expensive car is that Rolls Royce, the big one. Her Majesty, the Queen Elizabeth, when she was here in the 80, she was in this same car. So we put the British flag there. And one part of Sheikh Hamad's $20 million car collection has earned him the name, the Rainbow Shake. Here we have my uh, rainbow collection, and I was using this one uh, for daily, and the weekday, like this one is Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And that one is the Friday. So this car, I, I uh, ordered it during my wedding in the 84, and there was special order. This is all the sedan here, or the four doors. And we have the sitter wing, the old one, and the, the DS, the famous one. We have again Rolls Royce here, and we have the New York taxi. Here we have the big truck, the one which pulling the globe. They use it for oil field and it cost nearly $700,000. This is a new uh, car built in the United States by Chrysler, and it's a beautiful car. In the coming months, Sheikh Hamad will open the doors of his car museum to the general public. He has been planning it for the past three years, and with his royal obligations, he can guarantee that his collection of cars can only grow. Every year I buy many cars, and uh, of course I don't sell cars. We are from royal family, and uh, people wait for us to give them cars, and give a free car, and uh, not selling car. When I never sell car. I cannot sell car. It is a shame, you know, in our country, one of the royal family selling car. 
Sheikh Hamad might be pleased with his idiosyncratic achievements. But are there any more innovations still to come? Now, for the time being, I'm not dreaming for anything because I feel I've done what I want to do. You know. I make all my dreams true.